All righty. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and lacrosse fans. You are now here with us at Tropical Mooreshead Park in sunny Ballarat, or uh, currently less sunny Ballarat, as the Phantoms open their account on the day. Two to one is the score. They trail the Thunder. A bit of frustration on the bench F currently from the Phantoms coaches, but we have a goal there. In all of the kerfuffle that was this morning, we uh, have not had team sheets uh, sourced yet. We uh, apologise, obviously, for the uh, lack of uh, time acknowledgement. We uh, didn't know this game was starting until it was uh, essentially started. So, Thunder lead by 1-2-1 one. One is the score, and ball's down in the middle. I will uh, do my best to give you names as I can, and we'll do our best to keep the uh, coverage flowing as Phantoms look to clear through Butfield. He hits the deck hard and ball is scooped up again by the Phantoms who look to continue to clear. Field is sloppy but it doesn't look too slippery underfoot. Neither side seems to be overly affected currently as Glass defends hard out wide. Alright, so... All right, so we're going to have a penalty here against the Phantoms. They were in possession. Not sure what the uh, complaints were, but they've been given an unsportsmanlike here early in the game. And we're going to see Thunder go man up for the first time in today's play. Obviously, this game, we are competing here for third position uh, between these two teams. They both uh, lost their crossover games today. I believe we may have a second uh, penalty being about to be served. All right, we do. So, simultaneous fouls. A little bit of a miscommunication there on the field, but a simultaneous foul. We're going to see both players serving one minute uh, as we go. Uh, referee is still working out, but it looks like we have an unsportsmanlike and a uh, unnecessary roughness call. If we have two players serving, same penalty. Team with the ball maintains possession. It was the Phantoms, so they are going to start with the ball here. Ball passed behind. And Phantoms looking to possess. Ball on the near side now. Sent up top. We've got five on five. So while both, play both teams are down a player, it is even strength still. Player loses their footing there. The check on that one is all good. As a player hits the deck, you're allowed to check their stick can still. Their, uh, their ball can be knocked out of there. You are not allowed to body, however, as that was done. So you can't push the player in the back. So I think we're going to have... So that, that push has been uh, deemed an unsportsmanlike. So we're going to see uh, another player sitting a minute. So we will now see a 4v5. Phantoms are going to be a player up. So Phantoms are a player up. Thunder will be in a four zone and uh, we'll go from there. Obviously, uh, games all over the place currently. We've got the Southern Cross and the Hurricanes playing on a, uh, an improvised third field. Uh, on the uh, rear field, we've had a few shortened games playing. We're about to go to 6v5 now and there we go. We see Glass coming on for for the Thunder and I'm not sure, can't see a name for the Phantoms player, but they are up to full strength now for the Phantoms, six on five and a ball on the far side. Now we saw the Phantoms running a bit of a wheel as their man up play yesterday. They look to run that again now, shot low to low, misses wide of the mark and with that, that will bring us to the end of the first quarter here at Moorshead Park at the Ballarat Regional Soccer Facility. Uh, again, thank you everyone for your patience in uh, getting this game to you. We were working as fast as we could as soon as the rain subsided enough for us to set up. And uh, we, uh, we got, got to you as quickly as we uh, could manage. So 2-1, the score currently. Thunder leading. Uh, and I believe they had uh, Phantoms had just backed up the shot. They should start with possession as there was a penalty being served. All right.
uh, trying to track down a digital copy of the uh, score sheet from yesterday's games between the teams involved. I'm hoping I'll be able to find a uh, list of names and numbers for our current players uh, until we can get the uh, hard copy out. All right, there we go. I have a have a list here. I've got the uh, some names in front of me now. So thank you again for your patience on that front, and I'll do my best to uh, keep the names coming. All right, so as as uh, expected, Phantoms will start with possession after backing up the final shot of that quarter. Uh, and as there was a penalty serving, they will maintain that possession. Uh, one of the little quirks of the men's game, you may see. Uh, so it's Frensham serving. Uh, number six, he was big in their game yesterday. He and Glass, a lot of the uh, offensive potency of these two teams, uh, of these Thunder teams, sorry, on the near side now. Phantoms with it. So 23, Mead up top, back with the ball now. Sends it on to Clothia. Clothia down low. Nice save on the shot there. Bailey Attenborough with the shot. And great save there by number 11. Ruben Mann, the Thunder goalie. He had a big game yesterday. Long bomb of a pass there up to 31. And it's Benjamin Pierce with the ball. He looks to go topside. Shot deflected wide. Ball backed up by the Phantoms. High ball up and into the middle. Clothier with it now. Uh, as the day continues, we'll try to get you an updated uh, running time of the uh, the day's streamed games. We've had a few teams um, uh, hoping to play on field two. We will not be able to bring you those games. So what was originally the expected schedule has changed. And again, we will update accordingly based on what we can uh, what we can work out. Ball on the near side now with number three, Jake Matthews. Looks to send it up top. We're back to even strength now. Tyler Mead with the ball. Down to Matthews again. Mead up top looks looks for the uh, matchup there. Decides he likes it and thinks about having a go. Takes it across the top. Decides against the uh, the drive we thought we were seeing. Ball behind now. Attenborough with it. Looks to turn the corner as the coma slide comes. Step down shot. Saved there. That was number one, Sonny Koenigan with the shot. On the clear now, definitely got a flag on the play, it seems. No, no, that was, uh, sorry, I thought that was the uh, the far side ref of the flag. Timeout is the call, though. Thunder will take it now. So 2-1 the score from the first quarter. No scores yet in the second. Both sides are playing some scrappy lacrosse in the muck that is currently on the field. Again, doesn't look like traction is too badly affected. It seems to be a, a slightly grippier sand-based field. So there is some water on patches. But the, uh, the traction itself doesn't seem to be affecting play too much currently. I think bounce shots will probably be a bit of a uh, an interesting one for the goalies to get a read on. But we'll see how we go from there.
Alrighty, teams heading back out. Phantoms playing defense. We're even strength. Thunder with the ball on the far side of the field now. Uh, again, as the day progresses, uh, we will be a little bit impacted by weather as to uh, how much of uh, what we can provide to you. There's not a lot of covered space here, but we'll do our best to make sure we keep the streams going as long as possible. Ball up top now with number 15, Jackson Newsom. He's guarded closely there. Pierce with it, sends it back down to Newsom. Wide open set here for the Thunder. No man on the crease currently. Sending some cutters through now as Pierce looks to get a bit of a drive. Hands off down low to Bug. On the far side now, still in possession. Thunder just sort of seems to be feeling it out. There's a flag on the play now against Butfield. We're going to see Thunder drive inside. Bit of a bump. Player hits the deck. Maybe a trip call coming from that as well. Obviously an incidental one on that one. I think a uh, high hit is the call there against Butfield as he comes and sits. So we're going to see Thunder go man up. Pierce on the near side with it now. Sends it down low. Bug with it. Carries behind. Far side now. Glass with it. Sends it across to Pierce. Pierce looks low. Thought about the low angle shot. Decided against it. Rolling back inside now. It's 33. Tyson Gill. Gill can't get that one to go. He hits the deck in the middle. But the ball's collected out back by Bug. Frencham with it. Sends it back to Bug. Bit of a 1-4-1 one one set now. Glass the shot wide of the mark. Delayed whistle on that one. So it's it's as the ball goes out, who's closest? I think there was a lot of uh, running done after the ball had gone out of field on that one. So it's going to be Thunderball. Uh, the ball was out pretty quickly after the shot there. Tyson Gill with it at the near side. Pass misses its mark wide, but it's going to be picked up by Glass as Budfield comes back onto the field. Glass looks for the one-on-one -on -one dodge against the shorty. Shot high of the mark, backed up there by the Thunder. Pass meant for Pierce. Falls short but collected in time as the defender approaches. Carries up top. Ball with Glass now. Glass is a bit of a trigger man for the Thunder out of their offense. He's got Butfield on him. Big check but a little bit a uh, little bit stagnant on the footwork there. Doesn't, get, uh, doesn't manage to maintain position on his player. Ball hits the deck after a shot and a rebound. And we're going to have a call here for the, on the loose ball. Ball's going to stay with Thunder on this one. Glass to Frencham on the far side. Driving across the top. The double comes. Triples there. Frencham still has hands free. Shot and goal there. Nice little work by Frencham on the, uh, on the ability to keep his stick up in a shooting position as he weaves through traffic. Nice little one-handed cradle. Pops his stick back up and then manages to just catch a hold of it with that second hand and pull through for a shot. And that's going to make it 3-1 Thunder's way. So the uh, stands here slowly starting to fill with some fans who are willing to uh, mop down the seats and go from there. Lights are on. It is a pretty grey, gloomy day, although there's a little bit of blue sky showing off in the distance. Great win there on the face-off by Phantoms. Ball men inside for Attenborough. Couldn't get a handle on it, though. Looks to get his own ground ball under pressure from two. Manages to do so and carries to safety. Nice work there by Attenborough, number nine. His pass meant for 24 in the middle. Rowan Glass couldn't find its mark, but it's... Wide out now, picked up by Thunder, who crossed the midline. Sending the ball in now for number 33, Braith Mor sorry, not Braith Morris, uh, Tyson Gill there with it. 
And Bug takes that one and puts it away. I believe Bug was the MVP of uh, Thunder for yesterday's matchup. Handy little finisher on the inside. Does a good job creating space and getting his hands free for a shooting position. Quick transition there from Thunder was the key. We had a nice possession. Uh, Attenborough took the ball under pressure and did a good job getting to safety. His pass in the middle just couldn't find its mark in Luke Rosenhain. May have, uh, may have referred to Rosenhain as glass on that last one. Missed, uh, missed which number 24 it was as I try and keep pace. You'll see the face-offs are being played just slightly high of the uh, X mark from normal. Uh, obviously a pretty chewed up area. They were moving a few face-offs yesterday already before the heavy rain. And uh, now continuing on with the same for today. Tyler Mead with the ball. He's guarded closely. Check comes into the middle there. Might have been a little bit of helmet contact. Considered a brush though. And Attenborough comes up with it. Attenborough tries to create a safety. Can't quite do so. And it's going to be a loose ball again. Players charging in from both sides. And I think as we're seeing, the traction doesn't seem to be too bad. But the amount of water on the field is making ground balls hard. Ball now with Thunder as they look to reset on the attack. Glass with it as Frencham subs in, passes across the top there to Magnus Waring Smith. Nice knock down there. Butfield manages to get the ball away from the player, but then pushes him in the back, going for the ground ball there. A little bit of a frustration play from Butfield. Did a good job on that knockdown. Just needed to get his stick out for the uh, the ball on that one. I think Phantoms players thinking they were going to go man down. Not the case. Just the loose ball pushes the call. Ball behind now with Bug. He's got Jonathan Mills on him. Carries topside. Gets it up to Glass. Glass has Magnus wearing Smith on the near side now. Smith guarded by Archie Cranwell. Cranwell taking... A number of face-offs to the Phantoms and was a solid player yesterday in their game, working hard at both ends of the field. Glass, a bit of frustration as he gets a check over the shoulder there. No call. Continues to go. Flag on the play now. One of those considered a slash. Glass looks to get his hands free. Decides about the hitch. Hand off now. Ball with Pierce. No, Frencham, sorry. And as he carries out there, we have a whistle on the play. The uh, advantage on the flag, for those of you playing along at home, lasts until the referees deem the team are no longer attacking the goal. Uh, as opposed to the college game, if you've seen much of that, we, uh, you'll see that it has to be a change of possession. So until the other team gets the ball, the advantage continues, uh, which I, I personally like. I think, uh, I think the advantage should continue as long as it can continue. If it hits the deck or there's a loose ball, if you can still score on the play, I like it. However, uh, obviously, that's just my opinion. Ball up top now with Frencham as the Thunder go man up again. Behind now with Bug. Bug carries up. Passes off to Glass, up to Frencham. Frencham on the near side now. We've got Tyson Gill. Gill passes down. Ball with Bug behind. Caleb Riga being the middle man on that interaction. Ball up top to Glass now. Glass and Frencham, big outside shots if they can get their hands free. Phantom's playing a pretty rangy fan at the moment. Gill now with the ball. He's guarded closely. Phantom's pushing out a long way in this zone. I like to see that, especially with the, uh, the rough terrain underfoot. Great save there. Uh, sees the Phantom's maintaining the uh, penalty kill as Butfield comes on to even the numbers. Thunder pass out of play, and it's going to be Phantom's ball looking to clear. Far side of the field, it's Tyler Mead with the ball. Mead carries over. Phantom's getting themselves set into their offense slowly. I think the difference so far in this game, it's 4-1 the score, Thunder in the lead. It's been a lot of the 50-50 balls. Thunder have been out scrapping on ground balls early uh, and a few of the loose ball plays I think have been the difference. They've created some transition for themselves there and been able to score that way. Both sides have had a few man up chances. Uh, neither side really able to capitalise so far on that advantage. It's been a lot of six on six lacrosse and some fast break action. Looking for the drive now. Phantoms up top, nice shot. Good save there by Rowan Mann. It was Jake Matthews who took the shot.
And with that, we obviously play in shortened quarters to try and fit all the games in. We have half time here at Moore's Head Park. Uh, we'll take a quick break now with some uh, replays from first half action before we get to the second half here, the Ballarat Regional F Soccer Facility. These games brought to you by the Australian Lacrosse Network. Alrighty, and we are back here for second half action. It's Thunder and it's Phantoms. It's 4-1, to one, Thunder leading, representing WA over the Phantoms of South Australia as we play for third place in the 2023 Lacrosse Australia Under-15 Boys National Championships. I've just been informed that the, for the upcoming games, 
We are going to have at 12.30, we're going to have Comets versus Storm, an all SA grand final rematch of the 2018 uh, tournament final, I believe. Uh, it was in Altona. I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Um, I played for, well, I coached for third in that one, and I sort of zoned out after that, but I believe it was those two teams, so it'll be an interesting matchup. Comets played Storm in pool play and had a decisive win, but Storm have been looking the goods, grinding out a big comeback win over Stars yesterday to get into the game, so it could be anyone's to play for. At 2.30, we then have the grand final for the boys' side of things, and it's going to be the Stingrays versus the Metro... That's another Victorian or uh, an SA versus Victoria final. Stingrays of SA, Western Metro of Victoria. Over on field two, one of our games which was moved as the field was being prepared over here, we've had the Ice defeat the Stars for third place in the tournament uh, in a shortened game. Any uh, Ice or Stars fans watching, uh, we'll hopefully have some... Uh, footage provided to those teams later on. Separate to AL and stuff. Ball now with the Thunder. They get possession after a good defensive stop by them. Phantoms player ran through the crease on that one. Glass pointed out. As they have possession, referee just raises the flag. Looking on the uh, clear here, it'll be interesting to see. They've got to make sure the uh, ball hits the deck, so it's going to be a turnover there. But for Thunder, will have possession here. As it would have been a, what would have been a minor penalty if there was uh, no possession, as Thunder had the ball, the Phantoms are going to serve for that one. It'll be a 30 seconds technical. Obviously not a personal foul there, just a little bit of a, uh, bit of a, Absent-minded moment there from a player who I think was tracking across for the clear. Happens to the best of us. So Thunder, 32nd man up play. Frenchman with the ball up top. Step down shot. Wide of the mark. Couldn't get it to go. Ball hits the deck. Again, a bit of a slow point there from the refs. I think they're giving the players a bit of a uh, false sense of how long they have to back the shot up. That one was out of bounds almost immediately after it passed the goal circle. Pass there with Bug for the Thunder now. Up top, Glass with Frensham as we go back to even strength. Mead coming on now for the Phantoms. Far side, it's Pierce with the ball. Sends it on down. I believe that's Gil. Pass short of the mark. Meant for Bug, couldn't get there. It's going to be Phantoms looking for the clear now. Ball now with Mead up the top, controlling tempo, settling things down. Obviously, with shortened quarters, it's important they uh, the Phantoms continue to tick away at the uh, at the scoreboard. Down three currently, plenty of time left to play, but they haven't looked as dangerous today as they have previously in the week. I think partly a little bit of a uh, little bit of final game jitters, a little bit of the field condition not playing into their uh, favour, and then again, as I mentioned at the. Uh, end of the first half. They've just struggled a little bit on the 50-50 balls, whether it's been uh, loose balls or backups or any other uh, any other of those sort of tangential to main play factors. Doing a good job when they've had good possession, though. Just to make sure they can maintain that, stay out of the box. Looking for a drive from behind. Now I like it. Turns the corner, shot wide of the mark. I reckon that was a slippery stick there. And it's got to be Backed up there by the Phantom. So on that one, we saw the ball trickled over the line very slowly. Frenchman was out of play before it made it there. Important uh, for young players. You've got to be in the field of play. It's not who's closest to the ball, including over the line. You've got to stay in play to be closest to the ball where and when it goes out. So Phantoms, nice work on the backup on that one, giving themselves a second look. Unlucky on that uh, finish attempt on that last play. Ball up top now with number three. That's Jake Matthews. He's got a long pole on him, but likes his chances for a north-south dodge. Big trail check makes him decide against the pass, but that ball goes wide of the mark. It's not going to make it over, though. The field has slowed down a lot with all the rain we've had. Again, we're seeing more and more blue sky. We're hoping we're going to be able to be nice and clear for the rest of the day. We've got two more games we want to bring you, and uh, just need to make sure we're not uh, electrocuting me. I'm sure there's other factors as well, but that's not what I'm worried about. 
Ball behind now, swinging it up the near side. Luke Rosenheim with it. He passes up to Attenborough. Attenborough over to Matthews. Matthews with the pole on him, likes his chances for a dodge. Looks inside. Good job keeping his eyes up. Doesn't find the pass he's looking for. I think they just needed a little bit more of an aggressive cut to the crease there. Jonathan Mills doing a good job finding the space, but I think could have done a little bit more with that real estate. Ball up top now. Attenborough looks for the dodge. One-handed. They're showing very early from the middle here, the Thunder. Almost a zone defense with, uh, with how far they're showing off. If you look at Mills there in the middle... He's, uh, he's got a lot of space at times, and I think he just needs to be aggressive with it. No point waiting and seeing what happens. I think he wants to be making it happen. We've got a flag on the play and the whistle at the same time. So we're going to have Frencham called for something. There was still possession as the flag went. Not sure why the whistle went at the same time, but a cross-check is going to be the call. Frencham will sit for his second of the day, and we're going to see Phantoms go man up. I think it'll be a great time. If they can capitalize on this one and build some momentum for themselves uh, with... Again, shortened quarters. There's not a lot of time left to play, but they still have the rest of this quarter and all of the next one. Ball on the far side now, up top. Matthews has it over the near side to Cranwell. Sends it down low, back up to Cranwell now. A little bit of a shimmy there. Thought about the shot, decided against it. Back up top, Matthews again. Looking to set that wheel now in motion. Attenborough with it. He gets his hands free, passes down the line. Clothier, oh, sorry, that was uh, Attenborough got the ball second there. It's Kernigan at the top. Unless it's Clothier. Sorry, guys. Having a hard time seeing uh, the black numbers on these purple jerseys in the overcast lighting. It is, it is. Sorry, it's Clothier up the top on the far side there. And we've got Attenborough lower down in this 3-3 set. Clothier with it. He steps in. Attenborough gets it. Low angle. Steps high. Shot wide of the mark. Again, I think we're seeing a lot of passes and shots here affected by some slick sticks. Obviously, the uh, the more modern performance meshes don't bag out like the old nylon ones used to. I have very fond memories of being a, a junior goal and having my pocket triple in depth and me being able to, uh, unable to throw the ball. However, the, uh, the performance meshes, which don't absorb the water, often get a bit of a, a layer of moisture over the mesh. And I feel like sometimes it makes things a little bit more slick. Uh, so a little bit a little bit unpredictable on some of the six here. So Phantoms getting some good looks lately in this third quarter. Just having a hard time finishing all the uh, on their hard work. Looking for a dodge now. It's Matthews up top. Gets by one. Looks to feed behind. Attenborough with the ball now. He's got a pole on him. He doesn't mind this dodge from X if he can get angle in his hands free. Looking for Mills inside. We've got a whistle on the play. There's going to be a flag there. That's what I was hoping to see more of from Mills. I think he did a great job there recognizing he had some space in front of him. Check that. It's not Mills. It's Raymond. I'm really struggling with these numbers. Sorry, folks. Raymond there cutting in, just streaking down to the crease, looking for that pass inside. Doing a good job there. So after that quick chat there from the referees, we've had a hold called on 1-3 the long pole. That is Jet Hall there. Unlucky on that one. I think, uh, hold call is sometimes one of the harder ones to know how far you can uh, how far you can go with your positioning as a long pole defender when you're tying a player up on the inside. But uh, again, another another near miss on that one. And I, I re recorrect myself. I think it was Mills and Raymond on the inside there who I was watching on that last play. Step down shot, low angle, feeds to the crease, shovel shot, can't get it to go, low ball. Going to be backed up by the Phantoms. Matthews does a good job recognizing where it's going and getting it to go from there. So Glass, I think, with a fair push on that one, knocks the player down, but then called for a loose ball push despite the fact the player had it. Ruben, man, what a save from him. Read that they were going for the five hole and just dropped to the deck on that one, smothering it down. Great read there by the young goalie. Nice work on the ride there. Attenborough gets a check. Ball comes free. He's got pressure on him, but he finds the pass upfield. Tyler Mead open for the ball. Mead now looking to come across the top. He's got a long pole on him, and we've got a whistle on the play. All right. 
right, so on that one, CBO, I couldn't see what happened on the field, which is why I was a bit confused there. The CBO is called that. We've had an illegal substitution, it looks like. So we're going to see a five zone. Phantoms coach is frustrated that it was a whistle on the player, not a flag thrown, allowing a player to go to goal. Obviously, the advantage play there, what they were hoping for. Uh, because that would have meant that they could score the goal and then get the penalty go man up for the next face off and then potentially have a play from there. We're scoreless here in the third period so far, 4-1. We've only had the one face off so far. Neither team has been able to capitalize yet in this quarter. Phantoms have had most of the possession. They've had some good looks. Another one in the middle there. Couldn't get it to go. Matthew's looking to chase a loose ball now. He's got a player behind him. Nice check on that one. Did a good job to get things wide, but Matthews did a good job creating space to get his hands free for the pass. Across the top now, step down, hitch, pass to the crease. Mead couldn't get it to go. And Ruben Mann goes for the dive to back it up. Ball hadn't hit the end line. I think the referee thought it was the black line on that one. It is the white line at the end of the field. So Mann has gone full stretch on that one. Ball never made it out of the field before the whistle was blown. Should be Phantom's ball, I believe. There we go. We've had the correction on the call there. Phantoms will maintain possession as we go. No. We're going to have, and if you're playing along at home, this is a great one. You never see this in the college game. We've got a face-off, not in the face-off. So this is the second face-off of the quarter, and it's uh, happening over in that far corner there. So uh, not, sure, not sure what's going there. I think Phantoms have been stitched up on that one, unfortunately, but they've managed to uh, get it from there. Phantoms win the face-off, and uh, as I'm sure... Anyone who's ever played some basketball after a questionable free throw has been missed. Ball doesn't lie on that one. So Phantoms get the ball back after what I think should have been a possession they'd kept the whole time. Up top now, we've got Matthews with the ball. He's got pass options. Thunder playing a pretty rangy zone defense as well on this man down. And I like to see it with the, uh, the conditions as they are. I like how far they're pushing out this attack line. They're really making them work hard. They're not giving them the easy inside step time and room shots which we know this Phantom team can absolutely capitalize on. Tied up there, Matthews does a good job getting free, so he can pass the ball off to Clothier. Clothier up top now. He's got Attenborough. Attenborough over to Mead. We haven't seen much of uh, Sonny Kernighan, and I think he looks like he may be off the field injured. Not sure what happened to him. I don't, don't recall seeing it occur. But uh, he was a key player for them yesterday, and they're definitely missing him out on the offense at the moment as there's a knockdown on the pass, and the loose ball is goosed into Ruben Mann. He goes the long pass upfield. Player left it to roll past him. Not sure what he was hoping for on that one as the ball's gone now to be picked up by Thunder again. I think maybe a little bit of a uh, lapse of concentration there from Oscar Meyer. Ball into the crease. Turn, shot, save. No. Ball has trickled in, and a great finish there from number 16. Henry Raymond, big body after the shot. Not sure if we've had a call made there by the referee, but Raymond's great work keeping the ball in his sights as pressure came in around him. Caught it, took a cradle, turned, shot. Ruben Mann got a big piece of it, but then the ball bounced back in and over. That is your nightmare as a goalie, especially if it's one of those ones that hurts on the way through as well. 2-4 the score. Phantoms are the first team to score in this third period. And we can't have that long left to go before we get to the fourth and final. Phantoms just getting their personnel on the field now. Cade Lakin out in the centre for the Thunder, trying to get a read on the Phantoms jersey number. Again, just having a bit of a hard time with all the glare on the field currently. Hopefully it's not too bad on the live stream. That's uh, 33. Braith Morris is out in the centre for the Phantoms. He gets the ball at first, but then it's knocked loose by the Thunder who pick it up before they are dispossessed, and Meade comes up with the ball. Short time on the play, it sounds like. We've got the bench calling for a quick one on this. Braith Morris looks for the drive inside, sees one, sees two, sees three defenders, gets by him. Shot wide of the mark, backed up though by the Phantoms. I like that there from Morris. I think if there was a longer time, you'd say don't go for the uh, don't go for the drive. But on that one, with a short time remaining, I like that he put his head down and went for a bit of a bull dodge through. That brings us to three quarter time here. We're going to have some replays of earlier action in the game, and then we'll bring you the fourth quarter to see who will come out in third place in this the under 15 2023 Lacrosse Australia National Championships.
righty, and we are back here for the fourth quarter. Teams heading out onto the field. Two points the difference in a low-scoring contest, which has been dictated by gritty midfield play and strong defence from both sides. Both goalies have come up with some big saves. Ruben Mann had a few highlights in that last quarter. Uh, the third quarter really dominated by the Phantoms in terms of possession of their offence. Unable to capitalise except for the one time. Uh, we had a really good finish on a play where Raymond took a ball on the crease and with a number of bodies crashing in around him managed to uh, dunk it over the goalie for, uh, to bring his team within two. Face-off one there by the Thunder. Glass comes up with the ball. And with 12-minute quarters being played, obviously three minutes shorter than normal, although it does feel a bit different. Glass hands off there to Frencham. Ball up the top now. Frencham dodges inside. Hands free shot. Goal there. And after a scoreless third period, the Thunder have opened their account quickly in the fourth. So that's Frencham got the ball from Glass before going for that drive. Uh, obviously, uh, assists in lacrosse for those of you playing along at home. Uh, needs to be, the score needs to happen almost immediately after the pass for it to account, as opposed to some sports where whoever uh, whoever gets them the ball is con considered to have the assist, uh, or even hockey where you get the uh, the double assist, so who passes to the assister. I do like the hockey assist, but that may be because I'm a goalie and I would get a lot of hockey assists given the chance. Ball in the middle now, both sides scrapping for it. Three points the difference again as it was at the start of the third period of play. Both sides still scrapping for it, and it is Mead who comes up with it. He's got players on both sides of him. Nice work keeping a handle on that one as Cade Lakin came in for the double team. Mead manages to weave out of trouble, though. Phantoms with possession here. We won't be able to see the slow, controlled play they showed as much in that third period. They're going to need to create early and often if they can in this, uh, in this fourth period. Ball on the far side now with Matthews. Back up now to Mead. Wide open set here. Down on the near side to Attenborough. Subbing on now is Joshua Brogmas. He got the ball and hands it back off to Mead. Mead with a long pole on him, looks for the north-south dodge from the top. Takes it wide. Nice defensive pressure there, forcing the, uh, the player out. Clothier now with it. He's got his player behind. The slide looks to come off the middle, but then it hesitates. Nice little show there by number four, Oscar Meyer. Matthews with it now. Again, being pushed wide. Gets his hands free. Finds the pass behind. Another look. Clothier with it. He's got Attenborough up top. Attenborough fakes the uh, pass there. Decides to hold onto it. Sends it on to Matthews. I think we're going to need to see some Attenborough Clothier two-man action if we're going to see these Phantoms getting themselves on the board in this fourth. Ball behind now. Clothier with a man all over him. Sends it up onto the near side for Brogmas. Brogmas up top. And it's Attenborough with it once again. He looks for the dodge. One hand on it. Needs to get his second. He's going to do it. Trips and slips. Ball hits the deck and Thunder looks to chase the ground ball down. Picked up now after a few attempts and Thunder looks to clear. Ball up top. It's Gill now on the clear, but he's got players coming in hard for him. Brogmas does a great job chasing him down, causing the turnover. He's going to be pushed on the loose ball. And we're going to see Th Phantoms coming up with it. Uh, Brogmas will get the ball on that one. Phantoms with it now. Long pass upfield meant for Matthews. Went over the top, though. Will make it out of bounds, and it is going to be Thunder looking to clear now. Up and over pass into the middle for Glass. With a three-point buffer in the low-scoring game, Thunder uh, can definitely take their time with it. Got uh, some fans in the stands who think that having one hand off their stick is a ward. But, uh, for those of you playing along at home, it's not. You've got to be deliberately pushing away a check. Checking, uh, checking the hand off the stick is actually uh, should be a call against the defender on that one. Ball behind, backed up by Phantoms. 
Bug with the ball and he'll look to drive. Nice little roll inside. I think he thought about going in, but decided to pull it out and send it out wide. Pierce with it now. For the drive up top, passes off, has a bump. We've got a whistle on the play. Thunder still in possession. Should have been a flag on that one. We've had a number of those where we've had uh, players uh, on the team in possession getting calls made against, uh, made for them. But the uh, lack of a flag on the play makes it very difficult to uh, capitalise on that advantage because it should be that free attempt where you can have an attempt at the goal and if it, uh, if it doesn't work, you get the ball back. And if it does work, you get a goal and then the ball back. Ball behind now with Bug. Up top, Glass, step down, shot, hits the pipe, bounces out. Bug thought the, uh, uh, sorry, Glass thinks the uh, shot must have gone in, though coming off the pipe as hard as it did, there was no downward bounce, came straight back out. Got a... Uh, Goalie there, who I believe has been sprayed in the face with mud. So as the ball heads out of bounds, backed up by the Phantoms, we're just going to have a uh, quick wipe of the face. Phantoms on the clear now. They're three points down. There is still time for them to play. Frencham looking to drive the player out of bounds. Ball flipped indoors with the uh, behind-the-back pass there. Meade runs onto it and picks it up off the bounce. He's got it up top. Phantoms looking a little bit laconic on this play. I'd like to see a little bit more pace from them. Really got to be making a move with three points. The difference currently and not a long time left. Phantoms offside in possession, so Thunder will get the ball there. Maybe a bit of a miscommunication there on the uh, on the man down as a player returned to play. Not sure exactly what it was, but Thunder will get the ball as it's a technical. No free clear on that one. They'll have to carry it out for themselves. Although as the clock is in their advantage with their three-point lead, I think a slow clear may not necessarily be working against them. Pass meant for Pierce. Got to his... Stick couldn't make it quite uh, a catch, though. And now a two-on-one ground ball there. Pierce will get it. Nice work there by Joshua Clo uh, Sorry, not Clo there. Caleb Riga. Uh, just being a bit of a decoy on that one. Playing some good man ball. Allowing his teammate just to pick that one up. Bounce shot saved there. Nice work by uh, Alexander Murray there. Phantoms looking for a clear. Two men on it. Big bump. Ball hits the deck. Don't believe... Oh, flag on the play now. Not sure... Not sure I had an issue with the hit on that one, but as the ball... As the uh, stick left the player's hand... As the stick left the player's hand, it cannot remain in contact with the ball. Looks like we've got an interference call made against Frencham, so he'll sit for 30. Not, uh, not sure, not sure what the uh, what the technical was there, but uh, I think Thunder thought they should be getting it back as the uh, Phantoms players' stick did inadvertently stay in contact with the ball after it was knocked loose of his hands. But we'll see Phantoms with it. And I wouldn't mind a goal here, just to uh, get the game a little bit closer now. Ball up top with Attenborough. He passes to Clothier. Clothier looks low. Shot wide of the mark in front of the face of the goal, but it'll be backed up by the Phantoms. Shot there by Attenborough, wide of the mark, backed up by the Phantoms once more. For those of you watching at home wondering about the upcoming games, we're going to have at 12.30 or just after local time, we're going to see Comets taking on Storm in an all-SA girls final. Uh, that will pend the ending of this game, obviously, trying to get it in as close as possible. But 12.30 is the current scheduled time. 
Then at 2.30, we are going to have the Western Metro taking on the Stingrays as we have a shot not make it into the goal there. Player hit the crease, but it's going with the Thunder now anyway. So again, local time, we're going to have 12.30, the girls' final, and then 2.30, the boys' final. If you are not local to Ballarat, it'll be at a different time. Pass meant for a Thunder player. Misses and rolls out of bounds. Going to be backed up there. Clothier will get the ball. Up top now, we've got Matthews with the ball. Ball's knocks loose. Both sides scrapping for it now. It's on the deck. Neither side able to come up with a clean. Matthews got a piece of it. Popped it up in the air. Couldn't get a handle on it, though. Still on the deck. Knocks loose. Thunder making a chance to run onto it now. Matthews continues to scrap, though. Great individual hustle plays by him. Unfortunately, and though, for Matthews, it comes up in the stick of friendship for Thunder. Thunder's shot saved there. Murray looking for the clear now. Ball upfield, and it's Matthews who fought so hard for that last possession. With a short time left to play, Phantoms need to be getting to the goal. I think, again, they've been just a little bit slow in their attacking in this fourth period of play. It's uh, do or die time now if they want to get this bronze medal. There is no bronze medal. They just come in third. But if they want to get this bronze medal, Matthews with the ball now needs to be doing something. Timeout call there by the Phantoms. I think the coach is trying to urge the, uh, the faster play. Players just a little bit hesitant there, trying to play controlled ball. But with a short time remaining... Control ball does not win games. Uh, according to latest statistics, the team with more goals at the end of the game wins. Down in front of the field, we see the uh, Comets team coming out ready to get themselves going. They are a strong favourite coming into today's final after going undefeated through the week. They have played Storm already and managed to get a win in that game. So they are replaying a, uh, a team they've already seen, a fellow South Australian side. Again, I said, I believe it's a 2018 finals rematch, although I can't be sure in that one. Phantoms in possession. They trail by three. And they have the ball up top on the far side of the field in the stick of Matthews. Again, we saw earlier in the game we had a number one for the Phantoms, Sonny Kearney. And he's gone out hurt, I believe. Or he may not have suited up. I'm not sure if I did see him out there at all. But uh, he's gone down. He was a key for them in yesterday's game. And I think missing him has definitely been a little bit of a... Uh, a hobble for their offense, but at the moment they've got to be going and they've got to be going fast. Ball in the stick of Attenborough, he gets it to Clothier. Clothier shot high of the mark, diving for the backup, but it is Ruben Mann who gets the backup on that one. Great hustle play there by the goalie. Looking for the clear now. Phantoms, if they want to get it back, and this is the all or nothing time, losing by four, losing by five, it's the same thing at this point. A loss is fourth position in the tournament. A win gets them third. What they're going to want to do now is go all or nothing. Glass with the ball now. He's watched by Meade. I'd like to see Phantom sending a double. Maybe pulling Murray. Murray, great out of the goals. He's got good mobility. He could come out and press potentially on an inside player. However, still just floating a defender in the middle there as they uh, look to play 6v6. Ball in the stick of Pierce now. He drives inside, gets the double, gets the triple. Goes for a one-handed shot, can't get it to go. Ball goes out of bounds, backed up there by the Thunder. Got another appeal on that one, I believe, once again. Well, that's, so that's the Phantom player, I believe, has stepped out of bounds. He is no longer in play and eligible to be considered the backup on that shot. So I think good call there by the refs to get that one going. Thunder looking to just move the ball around and possess. We've got to look for a drive inside. Sends it inside now. Step down shot from Frencham. Can't get it to go, but it's backed up by Glass. Looking for a drive on this one. Thunder with the lead at the moment. Glass drives inside. 
No goal is the call. Crease infringement there. But uh, Glass appealing for a uh, cross-check against him. No call of that one there. Phantoms with it. Got to go long. Got to go fast if they can make it work here. Attenborough with the ball. He's guarded closely. He gets a gap in front of him. He's got space if he can take advantage of it. He's got a man on the crease. His shot goes wide of the mark, and that will see Thunder come out on top. 5-2 to two is the final score here at Morshead Park. Thunder coming in third place in the tournament. Phantoms falling to fourth, unfortunately. Great play there by the Phantoms. Unfortunately, just unable to get on the scoreboard as they needed to. They had a great third period, maintained possession most of the time in it. Murray had some big saves for them, and then some good play across the board. Mead and Matthews particularly strong for them. Thunder, though, and un unable to be caught as they maintain their lead. 5-2 after a strong tournament from the Thunder boys. And uh, they looked the goods from the start. They opened the scoring and they maintained their buffer the whole way through in a low-scoring, heavily defended game. Uh, a lot of penalties both ways. A lot of man-up opportunities, but the defense is still able to keep things under wraps as they uh, ground out a gritty win there to finish a tournament on a win. Second after a strong pool play. But uh, that is the wrap. For now, we'll take a quick break. We're going to be back at what is hopefully a 12.30 start for Comets v uh, Storm for the championship game of the women's side. That will be a full 15-minute quarter game. We've had some abbreviated games on other fields to try and get everything through for the day to allow our interstate friends to make it home. But uh, that will be a full game, followed at 2.30 local time by Metro v Stingrays. Thank you, everyone at home, for watching. And again, thank you for your patience allowing us to get things set up uh, after a very rainy morning was uh, putting a delay on everything. I'll see you, hopefully, in about 10 minutes for the next game. Until then, thank you very much.